With the 5070 Ti release about a week away, there is lots of news out there about potential gaming performance. And in this video, we'll be taking a look at the 5070 Ti's Blender benchmark performance. I'm Mike, your creative tech chap, and today we'll be taking a look at the more affordable 5070 Ti and letting you know whether or not it's worth an upgrade for Blender. With Blender, we focus on the raw compute performance of these cards. Whether it's using CUDA or the Optics Pipeline, currently there is no uh, DLS frame generation or multi-frame generation or upscaling tech built into Blender. That would be a potentially powerful addition if it was implemented well. So what is the news about the 5070 Ti? Well, it's faster than I expected by about two, three, maybe up to 4%. So I've updated my charts. We'll have a look at those now. If we zoom out to see how it stacks up against other cards around it, we can see here at 7,616 points, it remains in fifth position on my charts and it sits nicely between the 4070 Ti Super and the 4080 Super. Now, you might have noticed there are missing cards on this list. The 4080 Super launched at around £200 less while delivering slightly better performance, making the standard 4080 rather redundant. I've also removed other similar cards like the 3090 and 3080 Ti. The 3090 is the only one that's there. There are no laptop cards on here and professional cards are omitted. There is not much of a generational improvement here in terms of raw speed. Now, one of the things that I think it's important when we're looking at this chart is to realize that everything on here is really, really fast. We are talking about the top 20 when it comes to Blender. And you can see there is a mild improvement all the way up until the sort of 4080 Super. We get this doubling in speed from the M3 Max 40 core all the way up to the 4080 Super. But after that, things start to get a bit more ballistic. We do get massive jumps. And I've put the 5090 here at sub 1500. However, if I push my card, if I overclock it a little, I can actually get that all the way up beyond 15,000. Did I just say 1500? Probably. It's tired. It's tired. I'm tired. Oh dear. Oh, what's going on? But we can see the 5070 Ti is actually square in between the 4070 Ti Super and the 4080. And it used to be just a little bit lower on my predictions, but it's gone pretty much smack bang in the middle. And you can really judge here on whether or not something is worth upgrading from and to. Let's just have a very quick look at the 70 class cards themselves. Just zooming in here, we can see the 5070 Ti is ahead of everything and the 5070 down here, again, in fifth position of all the 70 class cards. And we've got such a mixture of cards here with supers and TIs, etc. So it can get a little bit confusing, but I will leave this on here so you can just pause and have a look in your own time. With the 5070 Ti having 16 gigabytes of VRAM, the four gigabyte bump up from the 12 gigabytes of the 4070, 4070 Super and 4070 Ti is a welcome benefit. However, the 4070 Ti Super has the same 16 gigabyte RAM as the 5070 Ti. Whoa, what a mouthful. Now, more VRAM will only impact your workflow if you need it. If you don't, then it's not gonna have any impact on your Blender usage. Now, the 5070 Ti is looking like a meagre uplift from a past generation, and I'm sure the four different variations of the 4070 family will cause a lot of confusion for people looking to upgrade. From the 4070, it represents a reasonable 48% improvement. The 4070 Super, around 25%. The 4070 Ti, 22%. But that Ti Super, only 8%. But what about the earlier generations? While the boost from the 40 series isn't that much, because of the node shrink from the previous generations, there's a much bigger jump from the 30 and 20 series cards. From the 3070, it's 142% faster. 3070 Ti, it is 118% faster. And there's a whopping 270% increase in speed from the 2070. Not to mention across all of these, the doubling of the VRAM from eight gigabytes to 16 gigabytes. I try to avoid talking about price in these videos as value is different for everyone. And the prices can fluctuate wildly depending on where you are in the world. 
Comparing cards on MSRP seems rather redundant as well, since most folks, if they do buy one, it probably won't be a Founders Edition card at around $730 or pounds, wherever you are in the world. Price differences, hey? But it will likely be a board partner card, which is usually more, and I've seen recently up to 40 or 50% more on those new cards. Or you might buy one in a few years in the future when the prices are radically different. I remember buying a 2070 for about £400, which I used as an external GPU until Mac OS no longer supported that. And I did manage to get a 3070 at around launch price of around 480 But then they quickly became £700 plus. Only in a few months, in fact. Uh, so in general, let's just stick to performance as that largely stays the same or gets better throughout the lifetime of a card. Unfortunately, a lot of the cards are out of stock at the moment, which affects the price, of course, especially with so many of the 5080s and 5090s being scalped. But that aside, here in the UK, you could get a 4070 Ti Super for around £800. And the FE, the Founders Edition, 5070 Ti is being launched at around £730, which is only a slight improvement given the small gains. But realistically, upgrading from that 4070 Ti Super to a 5070 Ti really isn't worth it at all. The 4070 Ti launched around the same price, so price-wise compared to the 4070 Ti, you're getting about 22% more rendering performance. And I think Nvidia positioned the cards like this for those gains. Even though realistically anybody looking to buy a 4070 Ti in the last few months would have realistically gotten a 4070 Ti Super for around that price. And then that difference is really only 8%. The real benefits can be seen when you don't upgrade each generation. And I've noticed that firsthand. With a family of seven and a few office machines, it just so happens that time-wise, I've managed to have a lot of various cards over the years, although no 40 series cards here. However, I also haven't had any AMD cards for a while, so I'm interested in hearing about AMD users out there. I haven't used one since my Vega 64 card, and I've heard mixed Blender experiences recently. And since bad news travels fast, I've seen a lot of negativity towards them, especially in the Blender space. I'd love to hear if you've had a good time with AMD in Blender in the comments below. Compared to the 30 series, we're seeing a healthy 2.2 to 2.4 times improvements. And the fact that this card is going to be around 42% faster than a 3090, that impresses me a lot. But then again, the 4070 Ti was 16% faster than that as well. And I really understand why people have such a bad sentiment towards these new cards. After having such massive leaps between the 20, 30 and 40 series. Looking quickly at the 5070, from my perspective, it's not going to be much better compared to the 4070. It looks like it's only going to be around 13% faster in Blender than the 4070. Now, comparing that with the 53% leap from the 2070 to the 3070 and the next 63% leap to the 4070, I really do feel this is down to poor naming more than anything else. Nvidia's naming implies a hierarchy amongst their cards, but cross-generational names don't really align like they used to, what we got used to over the last decade or so, where the 60, 70, and 80 cards of a new generation would align with the 70, 80, and 90 cards of the past generation. This broken alignment really started happening with the 20 series, and I'm afraid it looks like it's happening with the 50 series as well. NVIDIA does have a history of releasing these incremental upgrades, whether they're supers or TIs, and then when they jump back in time, they seem to compare it on the base model, not the upgraded model. And these small changes don't really have any major generational improvements. And the 5070 Ti does seem to follow this pattern. Now remember, this is a Blender focused look. You probably do more than just Blender on your PC. And even then a GPU isn't everything when it comes to Blender. If you're wondering exactly how Blender uses a GPU and what actually matters when choosing an upgrade, check out this video next. It might save you from spending on features or hardware you don't actually need. And I'll see you in the next one.